legends in music. Trying not to drop the juicy, ripe apples, the boy ran to his father's forge. He was all of seven years old, and he was at that age where everything around him seemed so unusual and surprising. Out of breath, he ran to his father and called out to him. A young man with sweat on his face in an apron of rough calf skin looked out of his workshop. He was so happy to see his son. He came out of the workshop and sat down on a low stool beside him. Father, the boy exclaimed joyfully. My son, my son, his father said tenderly. Father, what did you do today? The son asked with interest. I was working, his daughter Beck. I was working, his father answered. And suddenly he smiled and winked at his son. Please, my dear son, bring me a Dumbra. The child jumped joyfully. His father will play and sing. Wait, no, bring me a mandolin instead. The child ran off and holding in his hands both a doomba and a mandolin. The father smiled and gently touched the strings. The melody melted, which told of a beautiful story about love of a poor Jagit to a noble girl. When his father finished playing, the son exclaimed, Father, you play better than any Kuishi. I love to listen to you. Yes, son, the father replied. The song and the Dumbra are a balm for your heart and for the soul. And you know that when you grow up to become a real Jagit, you will be a famous Akun. Like you, father? No, not like me. Better. The father gently pinched the boy's plump cheeks. I will sing on celebrations and entertain everyone? Why only entertain? A song isn't only for entertainment. Sometimes it brings and gives life. For example, it gave life to you, the father said with a serious tone. How is that? exclaimed Kizdarbek. How does it give life? And what does it have to do with me? Ah ha ha, my son, that's just it. You were born only thanks to music. Akir, you speak in riddles. I can't understand anything, the child's brow furrowed. Well, the father grinned, I'll tell you how everything was. One day, one poor Jagit was invited to a celebration of rich people. The father began his story. He took out his dombra and in a cheerful mood went to the celebration. There, this Jigit saw a beautiful girl who was from a very noble family. The poor Jigit's heart became infatuated with such a beauty, but he did not dare come to talk to her. At the festival, this Jigit played his best. A respected bee announced that another Akun wants to fight with him. Only who? Suddenly, he saw this beautiful girl holding a Dumbra with her delicate fingers. She looked down modestly and sat next to him. They struck the strings and both Akuns began to sing. This beautiful woman sang with such a sweet and wonderful voice, and the Jagit sang as well as best as he could, trying to melt her heart. The son listened to his father attentively. And who won? 
asked Kizdarbek. Did the Porjigit win? Yes, and all the elders allowed him to meet this beauty and accepted him into the noble family. And soon they had a magnificent wedding and they got married. The father laughed and exclaimed, And then later you were born, our beloved son. It's true? The boy asked, not believing it. Of course, I told you exactly how it was, his father said seriously. You can ask your mother. I believe you, father, replied the son, looking thoughtfully at his father, at his mandolin, and pressed it tightly to his heart. When I grow up, I'll compose music for a cooey about it. Many years passed by, and this little boy, Kizdarbek, became an outstanding composer who composed many beautiful cooies. Taking the idea of his father's story, he composed a remarkably beautiful cooey called Beautiful. It was a warm summer, filled with sunshine. There was a little rain which calmed down the dust and brought a nice coolness. But soon the sun slipped again from behind the clouds and flashed in the sky like a polished copper cauldron. The wind brought a fragrance of the steppe flowers and a sweet aroma spread throughout the plain. This day it was unusually lively in the busy village. People were preparing for the magnificent celebration. Rich yurts covered with white felt were standing in a spacious green meadow. All the nobles came to the celebration, bys and bees and all the respected Aksakals. Pugnos Bai Mansur, trying to surpass all, ordered to set the rich Dastarhan and put all kinds of food in there. His servants called for the most talented musicians to play Itises. The Bai promised that the winner would get a generous amount of silver and the best horse from his herd. Another rich Bai, Yestai, did not want to lag behind Mansur. He ordered to unite several yurts and put them one to another and make a long spacious hall and decorate it with expensive carpets. He gave his orders out loud to make sure that people of Mansour heard that. From time immemorial, there was an enmity with each other. A lot of envious and greedy people were hovering around these buys. They so cleverly kept this competition that the enmity between them grew more and more, flaring up with the bright flame of hatred. Before the start of the holiday, men, women, and children were worried. At that time, a song was heard in one of the yurts of Mansur. Everyone was quiet, listening to this iridescent voice. They hadn't heard such a talented singer in these parts of the steppe. The voice bewitched and captivated the people. The Bai Mansur listened to this akun and smiled sweetly and looked with pride at the guests sitting next to him. His heavy head bent to his chest, and in a sweet languor he covered his narrow eyes. The rumor about this wonderful singer reached Yestai. Fury began to boil in his heart, full of malice. He clenched his fists to a crunch. He shouted at his servants and shook his hands. How could it happen that the singer did not stop at his yurt, but at the yurt of his hated opponent, Mansour? Yistai decided to send his most clever and cunning servant to lure this skilled singer to himself. Go and bring the songwriter here, to me. I want him to sit in my yurt. Tell him I'll pay him three times more than Mansour. If he won't listen, you know what to do. 
Next to the arrogant Bai Yestai sat a tender girl, listening to the angry words of her father. She was so beautiful, there was not a single beauty in the district that could be compared with her. Everyone thought that it was not an earthly woman that gave birth to her, but the goddess Umai herself. But she had a cruel and cold heart. She looked down on everyone and with contempt because she was a favorite daughter of a rich man. The servant rushed to carry out the orders of his master, Bai Yestai. He went into the yurt and politely greeted and sat down next to the singer. He politely passed on the order of his Bai. The singer was silent, and then he smiled dreamily and sang again. The messenger patiently waited. When the song ended, he again repeated the order of his Tai. The singer said that the Bai's suggestion did not appeal to him, and that he came here to sing and play, not to collect rich gifts. So he would stay here and wouldn't go anywhere. This answer made the servant of Yestai angry, and he began to take away the Dumbra from the hands of the singer, trying to break it. But all of the guests attacked him and pushed him out of the yurt. The singer holding the Dumbra firmly jumped up he looked around in confusion, bewildered by what had happened. He was a favorite singer of many people. Everywhere he was greeted with joy and honors. Beautiful girls held the bridle of his horse when they greeted him or saw him off. And suddenly a messenger, the miserable servant of Yestai, dared to take away his Dumbra. The singer was insulted and humiliated. The song was born instantly, like a flash. The young Akun started to sing angrily. Mansoor laughed gruffly. How well it turned out, he thought. You cannot think of anything better. I'm honored by this singer and Yestai is not. When Yestai learned about the singer's refusal, he was pale and purple, and at the same time he was burning with anger. Father, said the beautiful woman, smiling. Why are you so angry? And why should I be happy, daughter? This fool insulted me with his refusal. He made a mockery of me. Where is justice in this village? When the Argamak horse is tied to his legs and the donkey gets the first prize in the Baiga. But if he did not want to take your gifts, then he must come to you under a different power, his daughter said, squinting her cunning eyes. Do you have a plan, daughter? I don't think that there is a Jagit in this world who would remain indifferent to my beauty. I will bring him to you, father, said the beautiful woman proudly, adjusting her braids with her hands and came out of the yurt. When the beautiful girl crossed the threshold of the yurt of the Bai Mansur, everyone gasped in amazement. She smiled modestly and bowed low to all present. Forgive me, unworthy Aisulu, that I had the courage to come to the threshold of this noble house. The wonderful voice that I heard attracted me, and I could not resist. Mansoor's eyes widened in astonishment, and he stroked his mustache. What did the beautiful daughter of the Bai Yestai come up with? Bad thoughts began to overcome him, but he immediately drove them away. Perhaps she really could not resist the velvety voice of the young Akun. He thought and invited the beautiful Aisulu to sit next to the singer as an honorable guest. As soon as the young Akun saw Yestai's daughter, his heart skipped a beat. Isolu's rapid, penetrating glance at the singer made her realize that now he was in her power. I've seen a lot of beauties, the young Akin said, but you excel them all. To you, beautiful Isolu, I dedicate this song. The strings of the Doombra trembled, 
the singer began to sing. A pure silvery voice sounded so powerful that there was no barrier to it. No soft carpets, no yurt walls could stop this strong sound. A song filled everything around the village. People stopped and forgot about their affairs. Isolu smiled, listening to the singer. But suddenly, this piercingly pure voice penetrated deep into her soul, and tears came out from her eyes. She closed her beautiful face with her hands and sobbed. The jigget interrupted his song and exclaimed, What could possibly upset you? Incomparable Isolu, why are you crying? The girl lifted up her head and said quietly, I came to you, Jigit, with malicious intent. I wanted you to follow me to the yurt of my father, Yes Tai Bai. But your voice, it's so crystal clear. It does not have neither lies or meanness. It is created like the sun to carry light and warmth into the souls of people. The singer looked at the important, arrogant faces of the guests that he was surrounded with, and he rose and said loudly, You're right, my beautiful Isolu. I'm sitting here on an expensive carpet entertaining well-fed buys, and after all, my place is among the ordinary people. The singer took the Dumbra and reaching out his hand to Isolu, went out with her from the rich yurt of the Bai Mansur. Until late in the night, the young Akun sang to the common people, giving the people joy and hope for a better life. Kizdarbek Toribayoli, an outstanding composer who raised the Sherpe Kui to an unprecedented height, in his repertoire includes about a hundred kuis. The kuishi's dombra had a special sound. A unique instrument was made from high-altitude juniper. It accompanied the owner all of his life. The works of Kizdarbek differ with their inimitable sound. <laughs> 